Hello, 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 and welcome back into the pickle jar. I am Jill, your host, and thank you so much again for joining me. Let me share with you a little bit more about what I'm trying to bring to you here in the pickle jar. If you don't know yet the story behind the name of the pickle jar, it's the pickle jar because A, I have adrenal insufficiency. I've had it for 12 years. I have primary Addison's disease and we crave salt <laughs> desperately. We, most of us eat a lot of pickles and it's just, you know, it's one of those inside jokes with the community, right? So, um, so that's why we chose the pickle jar podcast and each pickle in the jar represents one of us. Okay. It's us coming together to be pickles in that jar and to fight hard for our quality of life and to live every day and to share what it's like having adrenal insufficiency. And this platform has been so great to connect us because so many of us live so far apart. I've heard from so many of you saying, you know, you know, until now I haven't had anyone to talk to. I haven't heard a voice say, you know what, I understand what you're going through. And that's why my guest episodes are so important because the more stories I can get out there, the more information, the more we're going to connect and more it's going to empower each of us. I've learned something from everyone I've talked to and it's been absolutely amazing. And I never get tired of hearing somebody's diagnosis story and hearing the similarities of what I went through. It just, again, it just reinforces to me, it validates to me what I experienced is real and it's tough and, but it inspires me to get up and to fight another day. So please give me your feedback. If you're interested in sharing your story, you can email me at the pickle jar at rogers.com. But here I'm trying to bring you a series of different type of episodes. So I'm trying to share with you my personal journey. I'm trying to educate, giving whatever I can. I'm trying to get guests that can educate us on how to take, you know, better care of ourselves medically, trying to get some doctors and, and different people involved in this podcast, because it's a great, easy platform to reach a lot of people and make a difference in a lot of people's lives. So if you're listening to this and you're in the medical community and you have experience with adrenal insufficiency, please, please reach out to me. We need you. We need change and we need support. And this is a great starting place for it. Um, so yeah, so I also have 18 years of experience in the fitness industry. So you're going to see some episodes of me just sharing with you you know, things I've learned over the years that I hope that maybe you can take something away from it to improve your wellness. Cause I do believe that there's so much that we can control, um, in our own wellness through our diet and our, um, our nutrition and our physical activity and our mental well being that's going to improve our quality of life. And then you're also going to see episodes about pickle tributes. Now, these are going to be very special episodes when they come up. Um, honoring people who have passed away of adrenal insufficiency. So if you have someone who unfortunately has, you know, perhaps died of a crisis or anything, and you want to share their journey, I'd be more than happy to use this podcast as a platform to honor them. And, you know, maybe you've listened to my dad's episodes. My dad had primary Addison's. And for me personally, yes, it's hard to go back down that road and I miss him terribly. He had primary Addison's, he died of adrenal crisis. And, but by sharing his story, I just feel he's still making a difference. It still keeps him in my life. And that, that means the world. So today's episode is about setting goals. It's new years, it's goal setting time, it's resolution time. And I want to offer you some advice that I've learned over the years, again, from being in the fitness industry for over 18 years. So resolutions, I know some people are anti-resolution and that's okay. Um, it's probably because of past experience, they've done resolutions and they never work out and it's all just this negative cycle. Usually what people do with resolutions is we set our goals really, really high, which is great but we set those goals really high and we make them unachievable and we don't put a plan behind them. I want you to take a minute and think of anything that you've done in your life. That's been huge. Now, maybe it's planning a wedding or your education, um, a big event that you've had to plan, even you know, your, your illnesses that you, you deal with. Okay. You started on the ground floor and you had to make a plan and you had to take it day by day. And the difference with an illness, you have no choice, but not to give up. You have to keep 
moving forward with it. You have no choice. With our goals, we can walk away. So resolutions, often people set super huge goals, which is great, but they don't put a plan behind it. And they have a misconception, the difference between goals and results. So usually when you ask somebody, what's your goal? They'll say, oh, I want to quit smoking. I want to lose 50 pounds. I want to get in shape. Um, that's actually a result of actions. So that is the result that you are working towards. And you need to set goals, those tiny little baby steps of goals to achieve those results. So that's really, really important to make that acknowledgement and understand the difference between the two. So I want to mention too, at the end of this podcast, make sure you listen to the end because I'm going to give you some of my top tips that I've put together of little goals. So actions that you can do with your adrenal insufficiency and non-adrenal insufficiency goals that um, I think are really going to get the ball rolling for all of us. Okay. Remember, I'm in the same boat right now. I'm setting my goals. I'm ramping things up and I'm kind of scared. <laughs> I'm scared of low cortisol because I know it's coming but I'm trying to be as prepared as I can. So now that I've completely lost my train of thought, um, I think we were talking about goals and actions. And so you need to make those little teeny tiny baby steps. So, you know, get yourself a journal, sit down, take a little bit of time, understand that your life is going to get in the way. So many people think this is going to be a perfect process. I'm going to do this. I'm motivated. This time it's going to be different. And they, they, they jump in with two feet and again, which is great, you're motivated, you're excited, but they don't, they, you're going to hit obstacles. That's reality. Life is going to get in the way. You're going to get sick. Uh, you're, you might have an unfortunate family emergency. You might get busy at work. You have to get your mindset in that it's about progress, not perfection. And when you make that little bit of progress all the time, it's going to be positive reinforcement and it's going to encourage more positive behavior. And when that positive behavior lights up, it just, it just catches fire and amazing things happen. So you have to have faith in the process. So your goals need to be actions. They need to be measurable. They need to be small. Start with the easy stuff. So many people, they're so motivated. They jump in and they, they do that. Try to, you know, hurdle the big stuff first. Some people can do it, but most of us can't. Okay. And that's okay. So start with the little things, the little things that you know, you can do, you can, you know, you can go for a 10 minute walk, you know, maybe not an hour walk, but you can do a 10 minute walk and then, you know, praise yourself for what you've done and just build on it. Okay. And when you start building, it doesn't take long and you're going to be doing exactly what you initially set out to do. So, so they need to be small goals, measurable goals, action oriented. They need to be realistic and timed. So give yourself a time frame. I'm going to do this. Let's put it in your calendar. Whatever works for you. You have to figure out what works for you um, mentally. That's one of the biggest things I've had to deal with in the fitness industry is everybody comes and they're like, tell me what to do. And, you know, I can tell you what to do. But the hard thing is you also have to tell yourself what to do because we're all individuals and we all respond to things differently. And that's OK. So you can take suggestions from everybody. Okay, you don't fit into a box. You are who you are. And whatever works for you works for you. Okay. So progress, not perfection. Doing is the most important thing. Little tiny baby steps and realistic timed action goals. Okay. You need to eat the nutrition to feel better. You need to eat the nutrition to fuel your, your workouts. Um, especially for me with adrenal insufficiency, my, my workouts, I have to gently get into those workouts because I know I will hit those low cortisol symptoms. And there's nothing more heartbreaking to me is when I hit those really, really low days mentally with it. And it's just so frustrating. So I need, I know I need to do this, but I also know I need to be prepared. So so that's my take on resolutions. Set some resolutions, set some goals, start realistic, start small, have that big end goal, break it down into chunks and just keep moving forward and know you are going to hit obstacles and that's okay. That's okay. The people that reach their goals, if you sat down and talked to them, they probably hit so many obstacles that it's absolutely mind blowing. Okay. That is part of the journey. So let me give you some top tips I have put together of what I think we can set some goals for 2023 
for our adrenal insufficiency and non-adrenal insufficiency goals that I think that are going to help um, improve your quality of life. And that's, let's make 2023 about improving our quality of life. And you, you have control over that. Okay. Can you hear me? Hear my words. You have control over it. You do, you do have power. Um, I completely believe in that. And yes, we are going to have bad days. We are going to have low days. We are going to have horrible days. We're going to have just a lot of days but we can have a lot of good days if we take control of the things that we can control. So some adrenal insufficiency goals that I think we, I encourage you to consider is one, check out those emergency kits. Okay. Put that on your to-do list. Okay. If you don't have one, get one. We need to get you an emergency kit. Um, get more of them, have them all over the place, know how to use them, make sure they're up to date and complete, have, you know, medical alert, have a hospital bag ready you know, start, you know, start putting that toolbox of safety together for you because our reality is our reality. Okay. We might need it. And in the case that we might need it, we want it quickly. We want it readily available and usable. Okay. So I do have some past episodes. If you want to go back and listen to them, there's episode 10 about the emergency injection. Um, emergent, um, episode 33, we had a wonderful guest on Stacy who talked about her patient experience. And episode 47, we talked a little bit about more about her patient care plan that she has put in place with her hospital. So those are really key episodes that you can listen to about hospital letters and different things like that, that might help you in your area, make your, your safety in the event of a crisis a little bit safer. Okay. So go back and listen to those episodes. Um, Goal number two is appointments. What appointments do you need to do right now? Okay, what for your health and wellness? And I'm not just talking about with your adrenal insufficiency, going to the endocrinologist and your routine appointments. What about things like eye appointments and updated blood work? And, you know, those little things. I remember when I finally got glasses, the fatigue that I was experiencing at the end of the day that I honestly blamed on my, my Addison's disease you know, part of it was that I needed glasses and my poor eyes were so tired. So, um, you know, if we can make a difference, a 5% difference, like that, that's probably what that made, like a 5% difference for me, you know, it was still an improvement in my quality of life. Okay. And it still means a lot. Um, another suggestion I have for you, if you're open to this is, you know, start sharing with people one to two people per week, sharing with them, what it's like to have adrenal insufficiency, you know, maybe at work, maybe you put a lot of salt on your food and you're sitting at lunch and you can open up a conversation with somebody and say, Hey, have you ever wondered why I put a lot of salt on my food? Um, oh, and you never know what the response might be. You might get, yeah, you know what? I've always wondered, but you know, I thought it was kind of a little awkward to ask. So, you know, and you can open up some conversations and it's amazing when I've started to do that in the last probably year, I've been absolutely shocked about the response that I've gotten. I've gotten, honestly, I think I've gotten all positive responses. And I've even heard from people saying, you know, oh, I have a friend with, with Addison's disease. And, and it's just been, it's just been incredible. And that's part of the way that we can educate ourselves. And also it's going to make you safer because it's going to make people a little bit more aware of what you deal with. And in the event of a crisis, perhaps how to help you as well. So here are some non addy tips to help you. Okay. So some non addy tips of things that I personally do that when I'm having a day, you know, sometimes the low cortisol days are so low, they don't help. <laughs> I just go to bed and I hide and I want the world to disappear. But if I'm in that kind of gray zone where I can kind of fight back, these are some of the things. And again, through being in the fitness industry, um, some things that I have personally find that help my clients and everything. So, um, what makes you happy? What turns that frown upside down? Okay. So, you know, put a new playlist down on your phone, find music that makes you happy. You know, is there a shirt is putting on, you know, a little bit of makeup sometimes, you know, I'm having a really bad day. Even if my eyebrows don't need to be waxed, I, you know, I make an eyebrow appointment because it just makes me feel better. Um, we even have, you know, some days, depending on what I'm doing, we have what we call the you know, mom's lady Gaga bra. And when she puts on that bra, she feels like Wonder Woman. So she, um, you know, so sometimes I do that. So whatever makes you feel good, 
have that in your toolbox. You know, maybe it's, you know, taking the strength just to, to do your hair or to sit quietly and read a book or have a cup of tea, whatever it is, you know, just have those things ready mentally and pull them out when you need them. Um, nutrition, nutrition is always, always something I'm going to stress here is always taking steps to improve your nutrition, eliminate that processed food. As soon as I put processed foods back in my diet, it drains me terribly. So work on your nutrition, take steps forward with that exercise. Exercise is important. I know it's hard for us and I know it drains me, um, my cortisol, and I have to be very cautious and very gentle when I start to work out. But I also know I need to keep my strength. I know it releases good hormones into my body. It makes my body happy and I need to be strong for so many reasons. So try something new. You know, yoga is great because it's nice and gentle. There's all kinds of things on YouTube and different things that you can try. Find what works for you. Start small. Start parking a little bit farther at the grocery store. Go for a 10-minute walk and then go for a 15-minute walk. Um, just small, small progress. Something that I do is I keep um, dumbbells in my kitchen because I find for my Addison's disease, small little workouts are better than long workouts. So I keep dumbbells in my kitchen and I will be doing, you know, cooking dinner and I do some shoulder press and I do some countertop push-ups. I do some squats. You don't have to do an hour workout. Don't put yourself in a box of what it's defined to work out and to exercise and be healthy. It's just about moving and doing more. You can gently strengthen your body and get it done. Just get it done. I sleep. This might be a tough one for some of you, but trying to find ways to improve your sleep quality. It's so important. I'm going to post in the show notes um, a YouTube video that I really, really like that helps me sleep. And you can check that out if you like. I think it's like eight hours long, but I absolutely love it. So, um, you know, taking things throughout the day, looking at your day, you know, is, you know, trying meditation or, you know, yo exercise helps sleep, you know, shutting off social media, shutting off your brain. You know, I know it's going to be a big thing for some of you and it's going to be small steps, but keep trying to find things that can improve that quality of sleep so you can balance out your body mentally, physically, and keep your body strong. Um, positive affirmations. I'm huge on this and they got to be positive, like positive, no negative words. I've had so many negative words said to me over the years. And I used to try to reverse them by saying, you're not that you're not that. And actually what I was doing is reinforcing to myself that that's exactly what it was. So as soon as I would actually drive and tell myself, you're awesome. You're a good mom. You're a good friend. You're a good person. And then I would get so excited. Like, and I don't mean I repeat it five times. Like I was repeating it for like 20 minutes in my head out and saying, and started saying it out loud. Um, that's what I had to do to reprogram my brain. So do it positive, positive, positive words to yourself. When you do something, give yourself, you know, good for you. You went for that walk. Talk to yourself like you're your best friend. That truly makes a difference. <laughs> and this is this last one is truly one of my favorite things to do. And that's purging. You need to, I'm such a believer now of clearing out your space, clearing out your energy. Just get the stuff out of your way. Um, clear it out. Out with the old, in with the new. And... <laughs> And I find when I have a low cortisol day and I'm so frustrated and the, everything is right in front of my face, you guys know what I'm talking about. And I cannot put two thoughts together to figure out what I'm looking at. The more I purge and clean and organize, the more functional my low cortisol days are because I can find what I need a little bit faster and I don't get frustrated. I would get so frustrated when I'd be looking at something and be like, I can't do it. This is so, and then the negative thoughts start. This is so unfair. I can't do this. I can't even load the dishwasher. I can't even find something in my drawer. Like, so I purge, I try to keep everything, the essentials at hand so that I have them. I've even organized my shelf in the basement for um, groceries for the kids so that when <laughs> I have low cortisol days, I can pretty much direct them. Yes, the ketchup's downstairs, you know, middle shelf to the right at the back. 
and they can find it. So those are some of my tips. Emergency kit, get your appointments, talk to people about your Addison's if you're open to it. What makes you happy? Get a playlist going. Um, you know, be ready for those low cortisol days to try and lift your mood. If you're in that gray zone where you can kind of kind of fight back, work on your nutrition, work on your exercise, your sleep, positive affirmations, and purge, purge, purge. Okay, you can do this. We can do this together. Set those goals. Take those small realistic steps. I know we can do this together. And again, please send me your feedback. I want to hear from you and I want to share your stories here on The Pickle Jar. So send me an email at thepickle jar at rogers.com. And until next time, please be well, my pickles.